So hi everyone, I'm Jerome Ko from Taiwan and uh, I'm going to share our little journey which is a work with my um, a great team and a great software engineers about how we build a local portal that uses global data and we believe it has encouraged the mainstreaming of biodiversity informatics in Taiwan. And so the next slide. So first I would like to use this uh, global biodiversity open data hotspot map from GBIF to let you have an idea of where Taiwan is and how we're doing now. So in the middle of the map, you can see on the west of the Pacific Ocean, there's this little bright spot over there, and uh, that's Taiwan. And since this hotspot map is like, if there's more data and it goes brighter, so you could see we are doing quite okay for now. And for you, the guys that don't know where you are, I think you are down there um, on the middle right side. Okay, so the next slide. But before 2017, we aren't really doing that good. You can see from this bar chart of the occurrence data in Taiwan um, that for around 10 years, the data increased very slowly. But now our growth rate is looking quite good and we are expecting to be having more than 20 million data in this year. Next slide. So what we really faced at the year 2017 is we realized we don't have enough data for practical use. It's less than 1 million data, but we also are having impatient financial supporters that are demanding for data application because they have already been supporting these data bases for over 10 years. So it's reasonable for them to expect something. Also at the same time, we found that there's a weak momentum for both data holders and users to either share or use data. So the future looks not very good at the time. Next slide, please. So we set three strategies to face these challenge. The first one is very simple with the idea that without data, you cannot do anything. And we searched around and we realized that for the global open data from GBIF, there's like two or three million data already available. So first we integrated it into our local portal and you can see the increase of data amount in 2018. Then to reply to the need for data application, we think we realized a simple data application scenario so that people believe these data are really useful. And we did this by linking local species name and conservation attributes from the catalog of life in Taiwan, which we are fortunate to have. And then to encourage more people to use these kind of databases, the idea we took is to make the databases look less techy. So we collaborate with wildlife illustrators to design a user-friendly interface. The next slide, please. So I'll start by showing our local portal, which is called the Taiwan Biodiversity Network. From now on, I'll call it TBN um, to show you how we made it less techy. This is how it looks in 2017. And then the next slide. And this is in 18 when we start to work with the wildlife illustrators and next. And this is how it looks like now. So you can see there's these uh, very beautiful sketches of the all different kind of wildlife in Taiwan from the ocean to the mountain. And next slide, please. You can even see it change every minute you log into the website. And next slide, please. So I personally very like the cute spiders on the right down side. All right, next slide, please. And for the simple use case scenario, we use this idea of customized species list. Um, so the data users who come to this local portal, they can search for their area of interest. For example, a blue circle in this map on the left, and you can get a species list that not only has a scientific name, it also has a local language name for in Taiwan it's Mandarin and conservation status, including like whether it's endangered or uh, invasive species. And this is the kind of uh, data use that we figured out many people really want to use from these uh, biodiversity open data. We also provided 
a data visualization about the species list, which is on the right. And we also believe they can make people have a quick view about how these data can be used. Next slide, please. These are all made possible by integrating the global data at the time and also now. So on the left, you can see in 2017, the local data amount is quite small. And even now, after we included all the global data, it really contributed a whole lot to our local portal. But on the other hand, we believe it also encouraged more local data publishing, and you can see the increase of local data in Taiwan. Next slide, please. So since 2017, we saw an increase of data opening accessible data amount, which you saw in the previous bar chart. We also saw an increase in data usage, data sharing, and these all combined into an increase of recognition of biodiversity informatics values, and it's among various stakeholders. I'll show you more examples. Next slide, please. So for the data usage, um, you can either see by the number of visitors per year from the left graph, after we integrated global data and started to provide this kind of use case scenario, uh, the visitors really increased, although you may have to wait a few years after it really exploded after 2021. And people don't just come to visit the database, they really want to make use of the data. So the data use request also increased a lot, uh, not only the occurrence data, but also the species list for the orange one. And you can see it's growing more and more important about the need of these species list. Next slide, please. Oops, okay, so, um, so uh, but when we show the people that you can make biodiversity open data, these kind of usage, and this actually triggered more people to join to show that they share their data. And citizen scientists are the first to really share their data. And even to now, they contribute the most. So this is a map, uh, a graph showing the proportion of data sources. So actually, um, citizen science contributed more than 70%. And on the blue one is the government uh, institutes, it's contributed at around 20%. Uh, the yellow one is the museum. And the dark green one is from pri private sectors. Uh, so as you can see, citizen science is really a very important and very motivated group, but we also believe government institutes could do better. So next slide, please. Luckily, now government and research institutes are teaming up to share their data. We believe it's also motivated by seeing how these data can be used and re they really also want to use it. So we have now formed a Taiwan Biodiversity Information Alliance. It's a partnership among very uh, different government institutes and all partners have a shared commitment towards data sharing and cross-organization collaboration. I will not give more details because this will be shared in the later talk by our uh, colleague Daphne, where you see over there. And so please stay for the next talk. Next slide, please. So in conclusion, we think that if you are also facing these kind of issues in Asia, um, maybe even around the world, if you have a lack of biodiversity data policy, and you also have trouble having sustainable funding, or your culture has a popular saying that if resources spent on something, there must be visible output. Or in other words, investing in data management looks like throwing money into the water because often you don't really see a visible output. Or you have diverse culture or language in your country or region. Next slide, please. We believe a local portal with these features might be helpful. Um, this local portal should integrate local and global data with open license, like from GBIF. You could make use of a local catalog of life, which who has a common names in local language and conservation attributes. You use this to create a simple use case scenario and do not forget to provide a good interface design to encourage people to really come to interact with these informatic systems. Next slide, please. So that's all for my talk and I would like to thank our financial supporters for the first three, our great partners, colleagues, in Taiwan Biodiversity Information Alliance and all these citizen scientists 
and research project leaders who share their data. If you're interested, you can share, uh, scan the QR code to visit our website and welcome to contact me of any related questions. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Jerome. Anyone in the room or online has question for Jerome? Or comments? Hi, thank you very much for that. Um, as part of a talk I gave earlier, I was talking about the future of taxon pages and who they serve and how they work and what we expect them to do and what stakeholders we expect to serve going forward. And I think your envisioning the way you've changed your pages is a really good example of that, of how you were trying to make entry into this data open to more people and more stakeholders. So I want to say thank you for setting an example. Thank you very much. No? I do see a question from the chat, online chat. Okay, I will read the questions online from Marie. Do you get feedback from users? Do you know who is using your website? Yeah, okay. Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, we have just started to really ask the people who use the data to provide um, who they are, just starting this August. Previously, we think because we're an open data portal, we don't really want to uh, restrict them from getting these data. But from now on, uh, since we started to ask them to at least tell them, tell us who they are, we realized over half, maybe even 60 to 70% are actually from private sectors who are those companies or research groups doing environmental impact assessments. So these are really the people that really need this kind of um, data integration. And so because they really need the species list to get a quick view about um, uh, the place that maybe have some construction going on or maybe doing some things like that. And so I think that's our major user group for now. And uh, yeah. Yeah, that would be too. So that's a and I think that's also the uh, uh, one of the source of the increase of the visitors and data use. Okay, thank you, Jerome. Okay, uh, any more thank you. comments, questions? Okay, so if not, then uh, we will move. To the... See you guys. Is there a sound coming somewhere? Okay. We will move to the next speaker then. Um, I will introduce our next speaker, which is me. <laughs> okay, so for the sake of